looks, this one looks much better than Duck Hunt. And it plays much better too. You'll see why in a minute. Uh, first, I guess I will show you how Mario looks. Video games today are a massive industry with millions of users and hundreds of teams behind each game. While they started out smaller and simpler, they were an effective use of leisure like watching television or going to the movies. But this is not the only similarity shared between them. Although video games can be used for scoring points or competing against your friends, they are also an effective medium for storytelling. One of the first video games ever made was a computer at the World's Fair, and won the games it played at least 90% of the time. Over the next 30 years, progress was being made to perfect and advance these devices so that they would be able to play one of the first video games, Pong, released in 1972. Pong became a great success in the arcades, as did other games like Space Invaders, Asteroids, and Pac-Man. In fact, Pong became so successful that in 1975, Atari brought the game into people's homes. And a few years later, they brought multiple games into households as one of the first console systems. These games were mostly about getting high scores and did not drive the player with anything except for beating the scores of others or their own. It wasn't until 1976 that the first text-based video game was released. Adventure was a game that allowed users to choose their own adventure and it was available for many computers. This was about the earliest instance of storytelling in video games and it added to the video game genre in a big way. Soon after, games started having a bit more to them than just scoring points. In 1981, video game company Nintendo made Donkey Kong. A game that's simple in its form, but gave the player a bit of character motivation so they can score the points. The player played as the character Jumpman, and had to save the princess from a giant barrel throwing gorilla. This could have easily just been another game that tells you to get to the top of the ladder in order to score the points faster. But by giving the player a character objective, it makes the victory all the more meaningful. The success of Donkey Kong led to Nintendo's next game, Super Mario Bros. Another game where Jumpman, now called Mario, had to save a princess from a monster. This game featured diverse enemies and worlds for the player to explore and beat. This is an attribute of another Nintendo game made a few years later, The Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda featured an explorable kingdom filled with dungeons for the player to solve and defeat in order to get a step closer at finding the kingdom's oppressor and kidnapper of their princess. This game and its elements are added onto when there's a jump in technology resulting in better graphics for players to use. In the mid-90s, game systems like the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation were able to run video games with three-dimensional graphics. This gave video games the capacity to tell a great story accompanied with stunning new visuals and animations. This was applied to the 1998 Nintendo game, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. A game similar to the original 1987 game, but now with a more detailed world and characters that feel like actual people instead of flat pixels seen before. This was a 3D renaissance where almost every game had 3D visuals, voice acting, thanks for the heads up, cat, and sound effects accompanying its gameplay. And it was only the beginning. The next generation of consoles following these improved upon the visual and technological aspects of the last. The Nintendo GameCube, Xbox and PlayStation 2 were consoles of the early 2000s equipped with better graphics that were able to run more detailed characters, environments, textures, and animations. One of the game changers of this era was Grand Theft Auto 3. This game put the player into the open world of Liberty City as the non-speaking character, Claude. What made this game so different than those of its time is that it gave the player the freedom to explore and interact with their world. And instead of going to a different load point to play a new mission, the player could access them at their location on the map. This made the game more realistic because if you had to do a job for your character, you would go to their business or residence, which would always be in the same spot on the map. This gave the player a sense of familiarity that helps immerse them into the game and put them into a more relatable perspective as their player. Usually, the player would drive to the mission startup point and watch a cutscene of the characters interacting and get background information on the mission, 
before it's given to the player. The player would then go play the mission on the already established map and go to a certain point where they would usually play another cutscene showing the consequences of the mission. This was not the only game changer of its era. Halo is a video game that puts its player under the helmet of the Space Marine Master Chief so they can stop the oppressive alien races attacking the Earth. Now while not as grounded in realism as Grand Theft Auto was, this game still manages to capture the interests of its players. By making the main character a mysterious someone in a helmet, it makes the player feel like they could be the hero of the game because no one in the game has seen their face. On top of this, the game is in first person so it's seen from the direct perspective of the main character. This puts the player in the front seat of the game to view and fight in the sci-fi environments around them. In addition, like Grand Theft Auto, the game also features voice acting from the non-playable characters around them, so it feels like they are actually in the world instead of surrounded by mute robot-like people. Roger that. Marines, assemble for evac, pronto! One of my favorite parts about this generation of consoles was that with all of its new advancements, it was able to have the capacity to put the player in their favorite movies with movie games. Now movie games have had a pretty bad rep for a really long time. But now that the textures and models are at a place that can help tell the story of the movie, they weren't so bad. Some examples of good movie video games are The Matrix, Path of Neo, and Spider-Man 2. Both games are able to recreate pivotal scenes from their respective movies, and some of them even use the cast from the movie to provide the voices of their characters. Okay, Doc. I'm here. Where is she? What was cool about these games were that they were able to put the player in the movies they love and give them a chance to be the main character. And this brings us to an even newer generation, the HD era. High definition gaming made the technology modern enough to create highly detailed characters and environments to a level they've never been seen before. Not only are the characters highly detailed, but in some cases they are basing their likenesses on the actors voicing their roles. By recording their performances along with their voices, the gaming companies can present their video games with acting measurable to television or movie standards. This adds legitimacy to the medium, as well as elevates the story being told so it's more realistic for the player. It's at points like this where the video game starts to feel like the player is playing a movie. It is also in this era where they make games that involve heavily playing the story as seen in drama games like Heavy Rain or the Telltale games. Also, the HD generation allows games to have even more alive environments. For example, Grand Theft Auto 4 takes everything that was brought in its previous installment and improves upon it greatly. The city now looks more like New York City. It has unique pedestrians filling its streets who act like individuals, reacting to the characters' actions, or even reacting to each other. The game also features a focus on relationships with other characters in it. Similar to The Sims, the characters will call you up and ask you to spend time with them. This usually leads to playing a mini-game like bowling, or going to a comedy club, or going on a date to get drinks. And based on how these events go, they could lead to a positive or negative reaction that affect the story. But these aren't the only choices presented in the game. This game's story is non-linear, which gives the player a real feel of control over how the game plays out. This gives the player a feel of realism that furthers their involvement in the game. With all this in mind and how far games have come, it isn't unheard of that these recent games are being adapted to the big screen. The medium that once adapted movies to their games is now the other way around, because of how well their stories and look are being received. With games now looking more realistic than ever with actors from movies or television lending their voices and appearances, it's a no-brainer that they are being adapted to the screen because they can basically be seen as pitches to the studio executives and are ultimately a medium for storytelling. <laughs>